OBS version 26 has finally released fully to the public about a month after the testing began. And if you want to learn every detail and change that went into the update and some quirks that the beta had, I recommend checking out my original video back in August linked in the description below where I covered literally everything you need to know about that OBS 26 update. In this video, we're just keeping it short. We're going to cover five things, the top five features and updates to OBS 26 that you need to know about before you stream next or start changing your OBS layout or what have you. I'm Eposvox, Vox, your stream professor, and OBS 26 is here. It brings forward some pretty cool stuff, including feature number one, virtual camera is now supported within OBS, so you no longer need a plugin. This is a feature that allows you to take your OBS scene and layout like I have right here and send it to a video calling app, such as Skype, Discord, Zoom, what have you. So if you have capture cards, cameras, or other layouts that you want to use for teaching or video conferencing or just general video calls that can't be done natively in that software, you can now manage that in OBS, just the video, and then run your audio in normally to your video conferencing software which is pretty freaking cool. Previously, this required a separate plugin, which had its own issues and was kind of crash prone. However, there is a little bit of a feature difference between the two as OBS virtual camera built in only supports one output and it's just the main active scene. Whereas the OBS virtual camera plugin had a couple different cameras supported and you could theoretically send individual sources as separate camera outputs. However, that it never entirely worked for me. It would sometimes just give me a black screen whenever you switch scenes and stuff. But there is a little bit of a difference there and i'm considering doing a full video breaking down the differences including some features i'd like to see added to the built-in feature if you'd like that let me know in the comments below number two and i'm going to combine what is sort of number two and three we'll have a separate number three but number two is actually two features in that it is a source management toolbar as well as media source controls so this adds below your video preview a toolbar that actually lets you manage certain settings of an individually selected source such as a capture card a webcam an image source or a media file a video playback and you now get controls for them. So for capture cards, you can immediately pull up the properties or change the filters or whatever without needing to click a bunch of extra times. You just have one click buttons to access those settings. The media source gives you a lot more controls, including a playhead for playback status. So you can actually see where or control where the video is. You can pause it, you can skip if you're in a VLC playlist, things like that, which is really freaking cool and incredibly powerful and has saved me a lot of headache and allowed me to make things run a little bit smoother for my streamer news live show every other Friday. Check it out. Yeah. <laughs> I cover a lot of tech topics on my channel and I can't always go super in depth on all of them as some are just too far out of my wheelhouse for me to have expertise on them. But as an educator, I'm always learning. I get asked in videos on more hardcore topics like my automation scripting to provide more resources for learning for those that want to get into coding and scripting and things like that for themselves. And for that, you should check out Brilliant. Brilliant is math and science enrichment learning, taking a more active approach to education, as many of these skills you really learn by doing rather than listening to someone like me all day. They have daily challenges pulled from your ongoing courses that help you, you know, get a little refresh and get into specific projects each day and provide you with the context and framework to tackle each specific challenge and learn concepts through application, you know, actually doing the thing. If you like a specific problem and want to, you know, dive deeper, they have more, they have quizzes and more ways to get more detail about that specific problem. And if you get stuck or are having trouble with it, there's a community of thousands of learners talking about each problem and providing solutions and ways to help you figure it out rather than just giving you the answers. This has been super key to me learning to pick up Python to further enhance my projects and my scripts where I usually just put them out there and be like, if someone else wants to finish it, you can. I'm now learning to actually finish my own projects and provide better tools and allows me to engage on what was originally a passing interest of, oh, that, was, that, that would be cool one day to actually learning and developing a new skill. To get started mastering your own dream skills, head on over to brilliant.org slash eposvox and sign up for free. The first 200 people who sign up with my link will get a 20% discount off their annual premium subscription as well. So happy learning. Next up, they added a new AI noise suppression filter that actually feels like it kind of competes with RTX voice or NVIDIA broadcast voice in some ways. Uh, it, it, it's probably not as good in many scenarios and I don't have the time to fully test it, but I originally had a sample that you can hear here. 
So here's how my microphone sounds with the AC running in the background with no noise suppression applied at all. Here's how my microphone sounds with the AC running in the background with the default original noise suppression algorithm in OBS Studio. Here's how my microphone sounds with the AC running in the background with the new RN noise algorithm applied. Test, test, one, two. And for those of you who may have it, this is what my microphone sounds like with the AC running in the background using RTX voice. Set, a, set to about 50%. And overall, I think it works pretty well. It is surprisingly good and has a lot less overhead than some of the other noise filtration and suppression filters that you could use. So it's a great option for those of you who don't rock an NVIDIA modern, you know, 20 or 30 series graphics card, or just want something that runs on your CPU instead. Number four, we finally have screenshot capabilities in OBS. Unfortunately, there's not a button for it for whatever bizarre reason. You could probably use the scripting to add a button for it, but you, you get a hotkey so you can take screenshots of specific sources, your full video preview, or specific scenes with a hotkey. I've been asking for a screenshot button in OBS, which helps with thumbnail making and things like that for a very long time. It's finally here and you get a lot more options than what I expected, which was just to have a screenshot button just for the preview. Now you can do specific scenes if you have like a specific source you need, like like you just want a screenshot of your camera in a full gameplay layout scene or something like that. You can do that. It's pretty cool. And number five is a silly one, but one that I think just provides that extra level of polish for OBS. And that is that the audio mixer bar now updates at 60 Hertz, or at least you have the setting for it to update at 60 Hertz, which makes it a lot smoother looking, a lot more polished looking. It, it just it, extra level of polish, like I was saying, but it also helps it update more in real time because by updating at 30 Hertz, it was updating at minimum at half of your monitor's refresh rate for 90% of monitors out there or lower and wasn't entirely caught up in real time, especially for those of you running 60 FPS streams. And so this helps it remain more accurate on a time level, as well as just look smoother overall. So not the biggest update in the world, but they have been making a lot of changes here in OBS and I am stoked for them. There's also been some quick sync improvements. They added sRGB support. If you're doing PC captures, it's no longer the default as apparently it caused some issues with streaming to YouTube. So that's the thing. Uh, they've improved a lot of bug fixes. They've added some right click context menu options. And one of my favorite little features is you can actually reorder the VLC media playlist by dragging and dropping instead of having to click move down, move down, move down, move down, and things like that. So pretty cool update regardless. Glad we finally got one again this year. Uh, go check out my full video if you'd like to learn more. Otherwise, download link will be in the description below. It's no longer in beta or release candidate. It is full release now. Go check it out. Go play with it. Let me know your thoughts and come hang out with us on Discord and share your thoughts with it there over at discord.gg slash epostvox. I'm no longer misspeaking when I say that because we got partnered. So that's actually my URL now. Super stoked. Thank you so much for your support. Subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. I'm Epos Fox, your stream professor. I'll see you next time.